Brought to you by 1AAuto.com, your source for quality parts and the best service on the internet. Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. I hope this how-to video helps you out. And next time you need parts for your vehicle, think of 1AAuto.com. Thanks. In this video, we're gonna be working with our 1998 Toyota Camry. We're gonna show you how to remove and replace your rear trailing arm. What this does is it keeps the suspension where it's meant to be and controls the travel of the suspension so it stays within a designated movement. These can have the bushings wear out or they can become weak and rusted or bent from collisions or other things on the road, putting a lot of force on them. This can cause some vibrations, some clunking. The suspension will be out of line, so it may go down the road odd, create some weird tire wear, noises, vibrations, etc. If you like this video, please click subscribe. We have a ton more information on this car as well as many other makes and models. And if you need this part for your vehicle, you can follow the link down in the description over to 1AAuto.com. Here are the items you'll need for this repair. Grab onto the hub cap and remove it from the wheel. We're going to use a 21 millimeter socket and breaker bar to remove all five lug nuts. We'll crack them loose now, raise and support the vehicle, and then finish removing the lugs. We've put our vehicle on a lift to make it easier to film for you, but this job can be easily done with a jack and jack stands. Remove the wheel and tire. You'll see this trailing arm in front of the rear spindle going into the body just behind the rear door. We'll remove this 10 millimeter bolt on the e-brake cable retainer so we can move it out of our way and get to the top bolt on the trailing arm. Do this using a socket, ratchet, and extension. We'll just allow that to hang out of the way for now. But remember when we install the new arm, but the back half here does cross over top of it. We'll want to be sure we put that back in the same way. Remove the 17 millimeter nut and bolt going into the body. We'll use a socket and ratchet on the bolt side. Hold the nut side with a wrench. There is a wing nut on there that'll brace against the body, but we want to make sure that that moves. Once you get it moving, you can allow it to rotate around and that wing nut will lock against the body so we don't have to use the wrench. Be sure to hold on to that nut just before the bolt comes through so it doesn't fall. Then we'll remove the bolt from our control arm and allow it to hang. Again, we have a 17 millimeter nut and bolt at the bottom side here. Just be ready because when you break this loose, the control arm is gonna to wanna to fall. Here we have our old trailing arm that we removed from our vehicle and our new part from 1AAuto.com. As you can see, these parts are identical. This has a little bend here because we had a hard time getting it out of the vehicle and we had a stuck bolt we had to bend it to get around. But other than that, they're the same length and diameter. We have the same flange on the end here our new part actually comes with a solid rubber bushing as opposed to this one here. You can see we have the gaps on the side there. This is a little bit beefier and it's going to outlast the bushing that we removed from our factory unit. This trailing arm controls the movement of the rear suspension as that spindle travels up and down. It keeps it from moving forward and backwards while it has lateral links to keep it from moving in and out. This can cause clunking and vibrations while driving as well as alignment issues and tire wear. So if you have a broken or worn trailing arm in your vehicle, this new part from 1A Auto is gonna go in direct fit, just like your original equipment, and fix you upright. We're replacing our bolt into the control arm because our old one snapped. We did manage to get it out of the bushing, so we just grabbed a new one. Now ours is going to be a little different, but reusing yours, you'll still be able to use that same 17 millimeter socket and ratchet you used to start with. We'll get that in place. Pull back and install the bolt where the control arm mounts into the body at the top here. Then we're going to use a screw jack to put the weight of the vehicle onto our suspension. If you're doing this at home on a jack and jack stands, you can just use a floor jack.
torque these bolts to 134 foot-pounds. Now that our bushings are torqued at the ride height, we'll remove our screw jack or your floor jack if you're doing this on the ground. Reinstall the e-brake retainer bracket and the 10 millimeter bolt that secures it. Reinstall the wheel and tire. Get all the lug nuts down as tight as you can by hand. Lower the vehicle carefully back onto the wheel and tire. Torque the lug nuts to 76 foot-pounds in a cross pattern. Line up the notch in the hubcap over the valve stem. And tap the hubcap back into place. Thanks for tuning in. We hope this video helped you out. Next time you need parts for your car, please visit 1AAuto.com. Also check out our other helpful how-to as well as diagnosis videos.